Hello, welcome to Masters of Moment, brought to you by Freshworks. I'm Alan Berkson. Thanks for joining us and taking time to explore topics to help you improve customer experience and more easily delight your customers. Uh, as we continue to explore strategies for delivering great customer service, there's a phrase that often comes up, put yourself in your customer's shoes. H how do we get there? A key trait, one that is still distinctly human, is empathy. I'm looking forward to exploring how we can infuse more empathy into our customer experience. My guest today is Shelly Archambault. Welcome, Shelly. Shelly is the former CEO of Metricstream, who Reid Hoffman, the co-founder and former executive chairman of LinkedIn, describes as the woman who pulled off the most incredible Silicon Valley turnaround you never heard of. Now I feel like I need an entirely different podcast just to discuss that. Um, <laughs> Shelly Shelley currently sits on the board of, of Verizon Roper Technologies in Okta, and I, I could read her, 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 her bio for about two days because it's amazing stuff. One thing I do want to point out, she's the author of a book called Unapologetically Ambitious, Take Risks, Break Barriers, and Create Success on Your Own Terms, uh, a book that will inspire you and provide the tools that you to fight the battles, make the trade-offs, and create the life you want. Wow, uh, there's so much to explore here, Shelley, but uh, thank you so much for joining us today. No, oh, definitely. Thanks very much for inviting me. So the, the people like to say, put yourself in your customer's shoes and other ways, that in turn, but maybe it, it might help us if we just start to talk about uh, what, it, what, it, what is empathy and and particularly in a business context, I mean, we can all say, oh, we see somebody, you know, fell down, you pick them up, you feel badly for them, that's empathy. But maybe give us a give us a sense of what it means from a business context. Definitely. And frankly, Alan, it's not actually that much different. Empathy in the business context really just means putting yourself, as you said, in other people's shoes. You know, empathy at its very basic level, I always consider means caring. Right? Um, but when you actually look at the research, empathy falls into three different categories. You know, one is mentally understanding it, kind of cognitive empathy, which means, okay, I understand where you're coming from, right? And that will inform how I respond or what I do, et cetera. So that's one form of empathy. Another is emotional, which is something happens to someone or someone does something and you put yourself in their shoes, like the person who stands up to give a speech forgets their speech and is standing there obviously frantic. Well, in the audience, if you've ever been there or can imagine, you're going, oh my God, oh my God, I mean, you feel the emotional stress, right, that that person is feeling. That's that emotional piece. And then the third is compassionate, right? Compassionate being you've got somebody on the phone who's trying to reset their password because they've got to pay their bill like in 20 seconds, otherwise they get a fee. I mean, it's, it's feeling inside. Right? And not just feeling, but then wanting to do something, wanting to actually help, wanting to make a difference. So in business, just like seeing a woman pushing a baby stroller and trying to get it up the stairs and reach over and help them, in business it's the same thing. You see somebody trying to get something done, right, in the office, and you realize they need help, and you understand the stress that they might be under, and you reach out to help. It's actually the same thing. You know, one of the best contexts I heard for customer service or contact center, there was a, a head of a, 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 a Canadian telecom. He said, my job is to get you back to doing what you were doing before you called me because you never wanted to call me in the first place. Um, and that there's a, that's a level of context. Empathy is, is a sense, is, is, is part of context, but it's also trying to understand where the customer is coming from. Is this something that you can hire for? Is this something that you can train? I mean, how, how do we look at that in terms of our, you know, our, our skill set, for lack of a better term? I actually think it's a little of both. In terms of being able to hire for empathy, I find that you ask people to share stories, right? Stories. You can start to learn how they think and whether or not they actually have some of those feelings. Can you share perhaps an embarrassing moment, right? Or can you share when someone that you were working with, right, had a challenge and what did you do about it? I mean, you, if you ask questions and get them to actually talk, not about the skill sets, not about the jobs they've held, not about, but actually start asking to tell you stories. Many times you can start to discern whether there's empathy that's happening, right, or being exhibited in the story. 
So I do believe that you can actually interview, determine if people have strong levels of empathy or not. With regards to training, you can absolutely train empathy. Um, studies show that most people are capable, not everybody. We have our narcissists, you know, there's a whole set of people that right. aren't. But frankly, it's a very small percentage of our overall population, which means everybody's cap most people are capable of it. So therefore, you can train. And training is sometimes just bringing up the awareness and helping people understand the, the value and the, the power that comes from being empathetic. Well, you made me think about a question as you were saying that, which is, Shelly, you're working for me. You're on the contact center, and I, I and I, I get the sense that you're just really not displaying empathy. How do I have that conversation with you? What is the uh, the the way the, the best way to approach that? Because I don't want, I, I want to have empathy. I don't want to make you feel badly. I don't want I want to find a, you know, get you to a point where you're more effective. How, what's a way to approach that conversation? I would start by trying to understand their experience. So what I'd say is, you know, have you ever had an experience where you were trying to get some help for something and finding it very hard, difficult, or challenging? I know I have. And then I'd share a story of my own, right? Something happened. I was trying to put together a toy, right, for my child for Christmas. And you've got it and you're struggling. And it's like, oh, my gosh, you're under the gun and timing. Have you ever felt anything like that? Get them to tell you a story. Because almost everyone has actually felt a time in their own life where they needed help or they needed support or they're feeling under pressure, et cetera. And so when they tell you that story, you can ask them how they felt, right? And then did you realize that people on the phone are feeling the exact same way, right? The exact same way. And what, what makes you feel better, right, when that happens? So, that, so actually, instead of saying you need to show more empathy, so be emotional and be, I mean, that, those are all words. Right. I find to really have people understand what you're saying, you've got to actually touch their heart a little bit, right? You've got to get into their emotions. Make them remember a time when they were feeling, right, the emotional and wanted that help and support. And then talk to them about channeling that, right? So people on the phone, imagine that you are putting together that toy, right? Or imagine, I mean, whatever it is that their story is. But I find those are the most powerful ways. It, it 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 seems like it might be draining in, in, in a way if you if that's if that's how you approach it. So what, how do you balance? Uh, I, there's a problem to be solved, um, and ver versus you probably have somebody who's very upset on the other side of the phone, and you've got to find a way to get you both on the same page towards a solution, right? So there's empathy, but there's also guidance, maybe? Yes, I think as you're, you're really leading, you use the word guidance, they talk about leading, I refer to it as you're trying to get on the same side of the table, right? It's right. just like when you negotiate or anything else. Right now, when they call, you're on one side, they're on the other. As far as they're concerned, you're the person that's standing between them getting whatever it is that they need, <laughs> right, or want. So you're on opposite sides. Your goal is to work your way to the same side of the table. So it becomes not you're in the way, but together you're now working this through. And one of the best ways I found to do it is when people call and say, oh my gosh, you're that third person I've talked to, I keep getting hung up on, I mean, whatever it might be, right? They're all upset, da, 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 da. And what you say is not, well, my name is so-and-so and I'm here to help you. I mean, you, you can, right? But uh, no, what I would say instead is, oh my gosh, I would be so upset I can't even imagine what you've been going through. Let's try to figure out, start using words that put you together. Let's, right? Not I, not you, right? But make it about we, right? Let's try to get you in, in the right place. Bear with me for just a minute, right? As I said, it, I mean, so now what you're trying to do is get yourself on the same side. So you and the customer, right? You and the client, you and the person on the phone are now trying to solve this together. You're on their side. I, I think that was we could we could stop at let's get on the same side of the table. I, that is such a great visual because usually it's it's me against them. It's I've got a you know and I've got everything. I'm a contact center person. I've got my script. I've got my KPIs. I've got my metrics. I've got to solve all, and <clears throat> I've got my own challenges that I'm trying to deal with. And then somebody calls up, and I've got to find a way to help them. And but 
let's get on the same side of the table. I love that. <clears throat> so getting people on the same side of the table, um, words like let's, how, how else, how else can we put ourselves in that position? Look, one of the things I love, I was in the service business for a long time and somebody, something would go wrong and somebody wanted to blame somebody. And I would raise my hand really quickly and said, Hey, we did that. Or it's our problem. And I apologize, you know, you can yell at me later, but let's fix it. Right. So are there other ways that we can get on the same side of the table? Uh, definitely. Uh, you, you know, you touched on one, which is just accept responsibility. You know, many times people are just, they just need someone to blame right? <laughs> because they're feeling so frustrated. It's got to be somebody's fault. Sometimes they blame me. It's kind of like when you're a parent. I don't know about you, but with my parents, my kids, I was just, when they had to make a chest choice or decision or there was something they wanted to do and I wouldn't let them do. I said, just tell people it's un my fault. Your mom wouldn't let you do it, right? You don't have to take responsibility. Blame me. Well, same thing when you're on the phone um, and somebody is coming to you. Another way to come to the side of the table is just to say, you're right. That absolutely shouldn't have happened, right? That's wrong. Let, we'll work on fixing that through, but now let's try to, but then get on the same title. Use we, use how, whatever. Um, but accept Right, the responsibility versus trying to say, well, maybe you didn't do this right, or maybe you didn't do that right. Um, the other thing you can do is let them know they're sometimes they're not alone. All right, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. I got a Vitamix, all right, a brand new Vitamix. My old one lasted like 30 years, uh, so it was kind of old fashioned. When I plugged that one in, I turned to push the knob up and it turned on, right? So I get the new one, I plug it in, I push the knob up, nothing happened. Push it up down, nothing else. I can't think of this thing won't even turn on. I'm like a brand new one, it doesn't even work. So I call customer service and I'm like, I just bought a new item and it doesn't even work. And she said, Oh, did we plug in that? She goes, Did you turn the switch in the back under the cover? I said, Back under the cover? And sure enough, in the back of the new item, there's a little, you can't even see it, it's got a little cover, this little switch on off, right? Terrible user experience. But at any rate, and I said, Oh my God, that was it. And she goes, Oh, it's okay. I must answer this problem five, six times a day. A lot of people are in your shoes. You're perfectly normal. Right? So now she's trying to do is not make me feel like an idiot, but I basically didn't turn right. it off. <laughs> okay? Right. Um, so by, you know, letting people know they're not alone and others have done it can also, right, relieve tension. What you're trying to do when you're having these conversations is people are coming charged and emotional. And you're like a balloon. Think of a balloon that air has been blown, blown, blown. The thing is stretched because all the things they've gone through and what you're really trying to do is just oh, allow the air to relax a little bit, right? So you want to give them space, give them the ability, give them ways to let the air out of the situation so they can breathe and then they can focus. So, Shelly, we got a question that came in through this because in, in the comments, sympathy versus empathy. And I think this, this probably comes up a lot. Can you maybe help us? see the difference? Mm. Sympathy is something happens and I feel, I feel sad for you, right? I, I feel bad for you. I feel all these things are kind of for you, but that's, you know, but that's about it. You know, I can feel sad that something happened without actually internalizing and either emotionally understanding, right, or, or creating that perspective for myself, I can feel sad that something happened without actually feeling physically connected to what It happened. doesn't get me to the same right? side of the it table. Doesn't, exactly. I'm just watching you. I'm sad that this is happening to you, right, but it's on the other side. Versus empathy is really when you're feeling like, I understand what's happening, right? I can put myself in your shoes. I want to do something about it. Right? It's very different. It's you're coming together when you feel empathy. It's a much tighter connection. Sympathy, think of it as outside watching in. And empathy is you're actually inside. You're inside in some way participating in what's happening. I can have sympathy from the other side of the table. Exactly. Empathy gets me to the same side of the table. And now we are we are together looking at solving solving a challenge and solving a problem. Now that that's that's a that that's a great way of looking at it. Uh, let's say that I'm a manager and I'm trying, you know, I've got, well, I've got to have empathy for my, my team as well, but how do I, I, I how do I, we talked about the, the language to use, but 
how do I balance? And this is, I think, a big, a lot of people listening will have, how do I balance the metrics that I used for success? I, it costs me money to, on the phone. And it, does empathy take longer? Can empathy speed things up? I, I think maybe there's a myth there that by being empathetic, we're, we're, like, we're taking, oh, I, I don't have to hear their whole story. I know exactly what your problem is. Look, I was in IT for a long time. If you called up and you, you could say three words, I know what your problem is. Here's how to solve it. But that may not make you happy. Right. So how do we balance that? Yeah, it all depends on what cost you're looking at. Right. If you're looking at cost to the company, empathy absolutely does not cost more than just getting to the point, being quick and not being empathetic. Because I tell you what, when you actually show empathy as part of solving a customer's problem, the customer is more likely to continue to be a customer. Right? When you don't, when you might solve the problem, so they call in and say, thank you very much for calling. You hear the problem, you say, okay, do this, but you don't acknowledge anything. Do this, do that, do that. You know, people are like, okay, this company doesn't even care about me. Right? It's what they're thinking. So if they don't need your product or there is another option where they think they might care about you more, people will make the change. So while it might take a little bit more time, but I find it tends not to because if you can't get – a relationship going where you're both on the same side of the table working towards the same thing sometimes it can actually take longer to get there because people will fight with you right you'll say do this do this like no i've tried that right i've been there I've done. and so now you have this whole debate thing versus if you just took another two minutes right or a minute and actually made some comments let them know that you're on the same side and say you know what i know you tried this but i find that if you do blah 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 blah, blah then they might actually do it because they believe that you're actually looking out for their interests They'll do it, the time could be exactly the same. So I think there is a bit of a, a flaw in people's philosophy thinking it takes longer and therefore costs more to be empathetic, because I think in the grand scheme of things, it actually costs less in terms of for an overall company because you have higher customer satisfaction and studies to show people who are more satisfied with their products, their service, whatever, remain customers longer and buy more. And refer. Absolutely. I had, Absolutely. hey, I had a problem. With, you know, a, a lot of times uh, I, I would rec, you know, particularly if you're buying a, a, a high priced item, call customer service before you do it mm. and see how well they, they engage with you because that, that gives you a sense of how, you know, what, if you, what your experience is going to be a problem. Look, if you have a low cost item and, it, and you have a problem with it, it's, you're less concerned about the resolution than if it's a high cost item or, or, or just maybe emotionally invested. But you said something which I want to make sure that the audience hears. Customer service is too often thought about as transactional. You said relationship. And, you know, the, the, the term we use in the industry, customer relationship management, CRM. But too often, I think we lose sight of the relationship part and relationships start with empathy. Right. <laughs> Absolutely right. Absolutely right. And frankly, relationships are one of the most powerful, um, you know, network, right, connections in business. Whether it's the customer service and a uh, customer, whether it's peer to peer, whether it's managed, I mean, relationships basically make business run. It's kind of how it works. Um, all right, I, I'm going to flip this around for you. This is a totally off the wall. Uh, but I, I have this, I have this idea of, you know, that too often we don't think about the customer point of view. Um, if you're a customer, is there a way for you to use empathy to get better service? Oh, yes. I've totally done that. <laughs> you get someone on the phone and you feel, and it feels like they're feeling harried or, or whatever. And you can just say, oh my gosh, I'm sure you've had a tough day. I'm probably calling at the end of your shift. Right? Da, 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 da. I mean, I, I have absolutely, absolutely done that. Because frankly, I believe empathy is important in general. In general, for whatever it is that you're trying to do when you're working with people. Um, at our fundamental core, people want to be cared about. Right? Think about it. At home, you want to know that your spouse or your partner or your kids or your relatives, you want to know that people actually care about you. Right? And caring about you is more than just saying, Oh, hi, I love you. I mean, okay, but they only believe you when you show it, right? When you do the things that show thoughtfulness, time, when you show it. Well, guess what? Empathy, right? And being able to understand their perspective and showing compassion, right? And all those things, it actually shows that you care. 
and people want to be cared about in whatever environment they're in. So it's a very, very powerful, powerful emotion set. If you have a, a customer who's looking to be empathetic, talking to a, a customer service agent who's looking to be empathetic, that's that's a great interaction, right? <laughs> Uh, but, yeah, look, one of the challenges I think in business is uh, we, we if we can't measure it, then we don't know what to do with it. Uh, is there a way for me to measure, manage, think about the, the level of empathy that my my customer facing employees are displaying? Is there a, is or is that the wrong way to look at it? I'll I'll leave it open. <laughs> I mean, that's interesting. I don't know that it's the right way all by itself to look at it. I, I think as you're looking at metrics, right, you look at, and many customer service organizations have the ability for people when they're done with a call, right, to say, hey, this is helpful, this is good, whatever. So you look at trends and what's driving the trend. So customer service representatives, right, that have very high in terms of scores, et cetera, and then I'm sure there's periodic listening in, you typically find that they're actually showing more empathy in their engagement. Right? When people are actually scoring lower in terms of on average, that might be something that's missing. So I think it's, I don't know that you can sit there and create the effective metrics to measure everybody on how empathetic they are on all their calls. Right? I think the way to do it instead is to talk about it as part of the overall performance of what they are trying to accomplish. And then so it's the, it's, okay, good. Yeah, it's the outcomes. Uh, look, I, I could see. Uh, some analytics people saying, how often it does, you know, do we see the word let's or we, or mm -hmm. are there empathetic phrases that we could use? And the, the challenge there is that it's not just, a, if you're just thinking about the phrases and you just think about the words, then you're really not being very empathetic, are you? Well, absolutely. Here's, here's how you do it, right? <laughs> somebody, somebody calls in and what you say is, hello, thank you so much for calling and thank you for being a customer. I appreciate that you're having a problem. And let me, all right, so the, the overall stats would show, oh, I'm very empathetic. I'm using a whole lot of words. Does the customer on the other end think you care about them at all? No, they think you're reading a script, right? Very That's different right. from when somebody That's calls right. in and you say, hi, thanks so much for calling. I'm sure you're calling because you've got a problem. Let me see what we can do to you know, help you. That's a very different dynamic. So no, I, I think that just looking for words and screening for phrases and all by itself, isn't the right way to do it. I really think it's focused on outcomes and then look at it as a way, a method, right? Um, a tool and skill that you wanna make sure that people are leveraging as they're trying to improve, right? Overall outcomes and this is performance. So Shelly, we got a question about AI and this was a, an interesting one for me because I talk a lot about the, the, the future of uh, work and uh, if something is repeatable, and transactional, then technology can handle it. If, if a problem has happened and we know the answer, technology can find the solution every other time. But that means that all the easy stuff is going to be handled by computers and the hard stuff is left to people. Um, is AI smart enough to, to convey empathy or get empathy? Are we? You know, it's interesting. I think that AI can, can definitely uh, what's the word, um, can, can help and promote to a certain level, right? But we're not at the point yet, and I don't know what the future is going to bring. I mean, my goodness, in terms of where things are going. But right now, today, I think artificial intelligence can help sense, for sure, are people frustrated, right? Are they angry? Are they feeling unhappy or sad? I think in AI can do that because of how we speak, Phrasing, pauses, I mean, all that stuff, I'm confident that, that is, that's absolutely possible. Um, but can it totally replace in terms of here's the you know transaction, et cetera? Not yet. Will it get there? The answer's probably. So sentiment analysis is something that 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 is common now with natural language processing. Hey, are, are, is like what you said, um, it, based on what the customer is saying or what the what the person on the phone is saying, are they angry? Are they frustrated? Are they, you know, and, and I guess giving that guidance to the 
to the agent in real time saying, hey, you know, you realize whatever you're doing, it's not working right now because they're they're pretty upset. Or the opposite, hey, you, you did a great job because it's they started very agitated and now they're, they're showing, you know, they're, they're much you know more reasonable and more calm or, and stuff like that. So definitely. I, and even give some suggestions. You know, I think the power of AI is actually quite strong because you might be trying everything and nothing's working. And actually through artificial intelligence, because they can look at the depth, right? It's just sheer numbers. And when you're going through it, you're under stress. So sometimes you're actually not thinking as broadly, right, as you can. So even the ability just to give suggestions on what might work or what to try, et cetera. So AI is a tool that I believe will be very, very important as we go forward in this arena. So <clears throat> what from, from, from a, uh, what, what is one experience that you've had where maybe someone showed you, you know, have you had a customer experience where, where you where you got that kind of empathy and, and it was like afterwards you're like, wow, that that made a difference for me? Uh, well, I shared one with my Vitamix. <laughs> that, was, right. that was my that was my most that was my most recent. Um, let me think of one. Probably um, one that that happened was um, actually Lexus. Uh, this was years ago when I bought my very first Lexus. Um, and had a problem with the car. And at this point, I'm not even going to remember what it was. But I mean, had a problem within like six, seven months. This is a brand new car. And you're like, right. are you kidding? There no There's frustration. Quality? Right, right, right. Frankly, and it's, you know, it's a combination. You're working, right? So getting a car into the yeah. shop, making the appointment, and none of that is easy. It all takes time. Um, right. And so, you know, I get my car in the whole bit. And I will tell you, the service rep was just amazing. All right, absolutely amazing. You need to come in, and I'm like, all right, here's my appointment, here's what's going on. And the first response was, oh gosh, you must be so disappointed in us. Right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. so that's, that's, the, that's what you said. Raise your hand. Yep. Exactly. Acknowledge, exactly. acknowledge, they acknowledged their. Right, right, exactly. So what he said is, it's like, yeah. So, all right, so it kind of takes the, the wind out of your sails a little bit because you're getting ready to say, mm -hmm. and they said it. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, and then as we went through, they went, I mean, they left it, they fixed it, whatever, it came back, it had been washed, right, they even scrubbed around the tires, okay, they cleaned, I mean, they've done kind of more than you expect as a way of trying to make up for it, et cetera, but, uh, but yeah, I'll never forget that, coming in and just being so frustrated, he just said, oh, you must be so disappointed, and I was like, I am. <laughs> so, I, look, I, I've heard some, some really great takeaways. Um, the biggest one, I think, for me is getting on the same side of the table. Mm -hmm. that, that, that is such a strong metaphor because if you just picture, you know, every time somebody calls, they're on that side, you're on this side. How do I get us both on the same side, you know, talking direct, you know, looking at the problem from the same perspective? Uh, I, I think that's one of my biggest takeaways. And the other thing is, is putting the relationship in customer relationship management. Empathy is is a key element of building that relationship, right? Absolutely right. Um, what somebody asked, in fact, somebody asked. Uh, uh, one of the questions here was, um, "How do we use empathy to create a genuine connection with our customers?" And I and I think it, it, if I had to rephrase the question, is just how do you build relationships with your customers, right? Yes, and the best way to build relationships with the customers is for to have them understand that you care. And a way to have them understand that you care is by showing them empathy. Showing that you understand, you share that perspective, and then being compassionate to the point where letting them know that you actually want to help them get whatever it is, solved, resolved, fixed, you know, et cetera. But that is the key. So we we can identify em empathy when we when we recruit people we can help people build empathy as part of their skill set because it's a skill mm -hmm. that that they can learn empathy helps us uh, build deeper customer relationships gets us on the same side of the table uh, empathy uh, give, gives us more satisfied customers and more likely to stay customers maybe more likely to refer because of building that relationship so that's it all you need is empathy we're done <laughs> Shelly, what's the best way for people if they want to follow up with you or keep track of all things Shelly Archambault? What's what's uh, the best way for them to connect with you? Sure. They can find me at Shelly, S-H-E-L-L-Y-E, a -L -L -E, little different, uh, Shelly.com, or follow me on LinkedIn or Instagram. 
I try to put out in points of inspiration and help with people as they try to build and drive their overall careers. So I would love to see you online. And give me the elevator pitch for your book because it now, now I think I've got to go add it to my summer reading list. Oh, well, thank you. Unapologetically <laughs> ambitious. It's basically a book about how to get what you want out of life, professionally and personally. And I share tips, techniques, things that work, and how to be intentional. Um, so that's really what the book's about. So if you have aspirations, you have goals, the book can help you achieve them. I love the word intentional. It's actually something that I've tried to adopt because too too often we're doing things that either we're we haven't really thought it through or it was the default. Exactly and, right. And, and you don't have to accept the defaults. That's another one of my fav my favorite expressions. Um, Shelly, thank you so much for joining us today. This was fantastic. Um, I appreciate your insights. Um, and please follow anybody who wants to. Please follow up uh, online. Get the book. Um, thanks for joining us today. Uh, looking forward to continuing the conversation on the next episode of Masters of Moment, brought to you by Thanks, thanks so much for having me, Alan.